Okay, we're talking about statistics, and today we're going to talk about some definitions of statistical terms. So to make things a little easier for us to follow, we're going to define a few things. Our data is a set of numbers, x1 to xn. So we write those with little subscripts beside the numbers. So we want to be able to say what a typical element of our data is, and we're going to have three that we use commonly in statistics. The mean or the average you probably already know how to do. What we do is we add up all the data and divide by how many we have, or n, the number of pieces of data. The reason we tend to call that mean is the word average, it, in common talk, you know, I'm an average guy or I have an average salary, has a different connotation sometimes than it maybe does mathematically. So to be sp specific, average usually means typical, and sometimes the, the th mathematical, the statistical av average or mean really is a typical element, but other times it's not. So we have other ones as well particularly when there are large outliers that could mess up an average in the sense that it's not a typical element. If you have a small company with 10 employees and then the boss makes a million dollars a year, that would really influence the average salary. So a lot of times what we use is median, which is the actual middle number. It's middle if the data were arranged from smallest to largest, not middle just by random chance the way the data happened to come to you. So it's the middle number from smallest to largest. If you have an even set of data, obviously there's no exact middle. You have 10 items. You would average the two closest to the middle. <clears throat> Mode is the number that occurs the most. Sometimes data will repeat. For example, if you gave a quiz of five possible points to 100 people, obviously all 100 of them have the same answers from 0 to 5, so they're repeating a lot. And if number 3 occurred 60 times, that would be the mode. And that would obviously be another indication of what a typical score is. So we have the three of them. Mean and median are the ones we'll concentrate on the most in this course. Now, data can be spread around from that median. It could be really tight. All, all the data could be very close to the center, or it could be really spread out. So we need a way to measure that. And here are a few. One is the range. This is a little different than range in algebra, where range was a, the set of all possible numbers you get out of a function. Our range is the maximum minus the minimum. So we actually do a subtraction here. It's not max 2 min, it's rather subtraction. If the max test score was a 98 and the minimum was a 60, you would make 98 minus 60 and actually get the number 38 as your answer for the range. <clears throat> the problem with range is, of course, it'll grab the farthest outliers that it can find. It's going to grab the biggest and the littlest. And so you can have a lot of data that are really well behaved. They stay close together, and then suddenly you get one that's far away. And, you know, 1,000 people take a test, and they all score between 80 and 85, and then one person comes in and gets a zero. The range suddenly blew up on that one score. So it's not very robust as far as if there are outliers in the data, the range will definitely not be measuring what we really maybe want to measure. So the most commonly used one is the standard deviation. And it's mathematically it's a tad bit complex. We're going to find them on the calculator, actually, or on Excel. And we'll just consider it as sort of an average spread from the mean, from the center of the data. So if the standard deviation is 10, then we kind of think the average element's around 10 units away from the center. Quartiles is another one we see, and even sometimes quintiles, which breaks it up into fifths. Quarters or quartiles breaks it into quarters. So, and here's a little graph to show what I mean. If you laid out all your data from the smallest to the biggest, so the smallest data point is going to be minimum x, and the biggest data point is going to be maximum x. The median is the physical middle, and half of the data is smaller than the median, while half is bigger. So, what the quartiles are is we've kind of simply done a median of the bottom half. So we've broken the half into halves again. Of course, make, that makes it quarters. So 25% are before quarter one, 25% between quarter one and the median, and so on here. And median can actually be considered as quartile two. Now how we do this on the calculator is the following. Now to put the data in, you'll do stats, edit, and you type them into the L1 list or L2 or any other list you want. I've already typed the data into L1. Then when we want to do the calculation, we do stat, calculate, and we'll select one variable statistics, which is the first one. When you run that, it's going to put out all of these answers for, for the set of data. X bar is the average. Uh, Sx and sigma x are two versions of standard deviation, and it's a little complex why there's two. One is if your mean is from an estimate of the population, the other is if your mean is from the entire population. We won't concern ourselves with that. You can use either one in this course. And the numbers get closer and closer together if you have more data. N is the number of data points. So this makes a good check to see if you've typed the data in. Then we have the minimum. If we go down, there's so much data it doesn't fit on the screen, so we'll use the down arrow to get the rest of it. Minimum, quartile one, the median, 
quartile three, and the maximum. So as you can see, virtually all of these statistical terms are directly available on our calculator. You just put your data, your x1 through xn, in one of the lists, and one one variable stats. If you're using L1, you don't have to tell it which list. The calculator will assume L1. <clears throat> if you're using any other list, you'll have to type that in at the end of one variable stats. And you get all of these important statistical data, really in just a few seconds on a calculator.